A total lunar eclipse turns the moon blood red and the Leonid meteor shower streaks through the sky. Let's go out and take a look at what you can see in the night sky for November of 2022. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Welcome to the night sky, your monthly guide to the best objects and events that you can go out to see in amateur astronomy. Whether you're brand new to this hobby or have years of experience, there'll be something in this video for you to go out to see or image from your own backyard. Now let's begin by taking a look at one of the easiest and best ways to go out and enjoy the night sky, by taking a look at the best meteor showers for the month of November. Meteor showers are my favorite things to start with each month because they're perfect for new people getting into amateur astronomy and they require absolutely no equipment to go out to see and enjoy. For November, the star of the meteor showers is going to be the Leonids. To see it, go outside after midnight on the morning of November 18th and look towards the east. Rising into the sky will be the constellation Leo, where the meteors will emanate from. On most years, you can hope to see 10 to 20 meteors per hour from the Leonids, but a waning crescent moon will sadly wash out some of the fainter meteors as it rises with Leo throughout the early morning, putting the count closer to 5 to 10 meteors this year. Remember that the best way to observe a meteor shower is to get away from as much light pollution as you possibly can. Try to give yourself at least an hour to go out to enjoy the show, and remember that these meteors can take a little bit of time to pick up, especially for a shower like this one where the moon's going to be washing out some of the fainter ones. Lay back, relax, look towards the constellation Leo, and go out and enjoy the show this November. We've got quite a month coming up for the moon, with really the main event for November being the total lunar eclipse for many of us on November 8th. But let's start first with the phases of the moon, beginning with the first quarter moon, which will hit on November 1st. There's no better time to study the surface of the moon than right after sunset when the shadows of the lunar surface stretch across the face of it, creating a beautiful scene for visual observing and imaging. After the first quarter phase, we have the full moon on November 8th, the last quarter on the 16th, and the new moon on the 23rd. The main event for the moon, however, as mentioned earlier, is going to be the total lunar eclipse. Now, a total lunar eclipse is when the Earth moves in between the sun and the moon, casting our shadow slowly across the lunar surface. When the moon becomes completely covered by the darkest part of the Earth's shadow known as the umbra, it starts to turn a blood red color. This lunar eclipse will be best viewed from parts of North America, Asia, Australia, and the Pacific. I'm going to focus on locations and times for those of you living in the west coast of North America using Pacific Standard Time, but please double check your local news for specific times and dates for where you live around the world. For those of you on the west coast, Go outside around 1.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and watch as part of the moon begins to slowly be covered by the shadow of the Earth. Totality hits around 2.17 a.m. as the moon will darken and then begin to turn that famous blood red as some of the light from the sun is filtered through our upper atmosphere and then makes its way to the lunar surface with the maximum eclipse occurring around 2.59 a.m. and totality ending around 3.42 a.m. This will be a great event to see without any equipment at all, but if you've got a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, take it out to track this event throughout the entirety of it. If you're able to get any images of this total lunar eclipse with a cell phone or a DSLR camera, please be sure to share them with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. And if you're enjoying this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Several of the planets in our solar system shine bright this month, but the three that we're going to focus on primarily are going to be Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. 
Let's start with Jupiter and Saturn. You can see them right at sunset in the south and the southeast. Jupiter will be the brighter of these two objects, but both will give you great views throughout the entire night. I recently finished 17 days of tracking the four Galilean moons with a pair of binoculars and really enjoyed seeing how quickly some of them zip around the planet on a daily basis. If you own a telescope, go out and look for the great red spot of Jupiter or the beautiful rings of Saturn. This video I took of Saturn is at about 200 times magnification. And videos like this are my starting point for creating images of the planets. If you're interested in astrophotography, please check out my recent videos on imaging Jupiter and Saturn that I'll leave a link to in the description below. And while you're out looking at Jupiter and Saturn, be sure to check out Uranus as it makes its close approach to Earth with opposition on November 9th. Our main event for the planets this month is our close approach to Mars. Now about every two years we come into opposition with this planet, which means that pretty much the Earth gets in between the Sun and Mars in its orbit, giving us an excellent opportunity to go out to observe and image it for pretty much a six to eight week window of time. To find Mars right now, go outside and look towards the east. There you'll see a bright red copper object rising into the sky. We'll be sure to come back to this planet in December when we officially hit opposition with it a few weeks into that month. But from right now until mid to late December, we're really at the prime time for viewing and imaging Mars. So don't miss your opportunity to go out to see or image our friendly red neighbor. Let's leave our solar system behind and move into deep space. It's important to remember that for these objects, they are quite dim. So making sure you're away from light pollution, the moon's out of the way, and that you probably have a large pair of binoculars or a six inch or larger telescope is really gonna help you go a long way to maximizing your experience for the objects we're gonna be talking about. To find some this November, Let's go outside around 8 p.m. and look towards the east. There you will come across the constellation Perseus and our first target, the Little Dumbbell Nebula. This planetary nebula is quite faint at a visual magnitude of plus 10.1, but it was more impressive than I expected through my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope and Bortel 5 skies, revealing a dim smudge at 48 times magnification and more structure at 96 times and 200 times magnification. I would suggest using a UHC or O3 filter on this target to help it pop out of the background of space just a little bit more. Moving down from the little dumbbell, we come to a favorite target of mine through a wide field eyepiece, the double cluster. Throw in a low powered eyepiece, or even better yet, a two inch low powered eyepiece if you have one, and enjoy the hundreds of stars contained in these two compact star clusters. The bluish white stars of these clusters pop out of the background of space in this long exposure image. Let's move over to the constellation Cassiopeia for our next object, which I've actually never seen visually through a telescope, but it's one of my favorites every year to go out and image with long exposure astrophotography and it's called the Heart and Soul Nebulas. Located about six to 7,000 light years away from Earth, I was able to capture over two hours worth of data on this target using my Canon SL2, Ioptron Skyguider Pro, and 135 millimeter Samyang lens fitted with a CLS light pollution filter to bring out the faint red glow emitting from this beautiful target. I've got a video covering more incredible deep sky objects that you can go out to see this fall, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. Space is really big, and I'm sure there are some things I've left off of this list this month that you'd like to share with others. Please be sure to let us know about any questions, suggestions, or observing reports of what you're able to get out to see an image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.